Claire, thanks for having a chat with me. Of course. Get it. Yeah. Beautiful California weather. So We're loving it. Yeah. We're loving it. I understand you're a recent graduate. Can you tell me a little bit about how you're, where the path for your education and where you're at now? Yeah, so I um, recently finished my PhD, uh, spring of 2016, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, and that research was looking at carrot genetic diversity um, and also at intellectual property rights um, and how uh, genetic diversity is controlled and distributed um, and used by plant breeders. Um, and so that led into some of the work that I'm doing now. Um, so I am currently uh, still doing postdoctoral research at the University of Wisconsin, and um, some of that has continued um, with the carrot work and looking at uh, genetic diversity in carrots um, worldwide. And then um, another component of that work is um, working with um, one of the Native American tribes in Wisconsin, okay. um, doing some uh, corn seed production of their native populations for mm -hmm. them to um, have seed of those to continue growing. And um, I'm also, my other job is the executive director of the Open Source Seed Initiative. So this is a nonprofit that came out of my PhD work. Um, and so we are working to uh, create an open source system for plant variety releases, kind of like open source software. Nice, um, so, awesome, yeah. you're busy. Yeah, <laughs> lots of projects going on. <laughs> Perfect, so. awesome. So I'm gonna start off nice and light and easy. Okay. Most influential book? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. One book that comes to mind is uh, The Alchemist by mm. Paolo Coelho. Yeah. So um, I remember reading this book and I've read it several times. Um, it's really about sort of exploration, self discovery, um, and also I think in terms of relating to a career, kind of following your nose, seeing where, um, where things take you, and being open to incorporating new new ideas and nice. new new angles into your work which so. you have quite obviously done <laughs> quite obviously nice so you're already successful so I'm curious what would you say is the key to that success oh thanks for thinking I'm successful I guess um, I would say uh, um, actually to follow up on the previous question um, I I've done a lot of interdisciplinary work and I really um, think that uh, sort of learning about a lot of the ways that different different disciplines um, do things uh, and also having the option or a, a, um, opportunity to travel around uh, do some travel internationally and see how things are done in different places and then really think about like how do you synthesize that how do you think about a sort of a systems approach to maybe a specific plant breeding problem but kind of taking um, that bigger picture and then figuring out how to apply it to right. a more specific situation nice yeah. nice I like it I like it when was the last time that you actually changed your mind about something that was of significance? Over the course of sort of developing some of these different um, nonprofit projects that I've been working on, um, we've had a lot of, of points where it's kind of like, oh, well, do we do this or do we do that? And I think one of the times was when um, we, we had been talking with all these different people about this open source project and um, trying to figure out like, how do we make it go? How do we just do something and make it happen? And at some point we were just like, you know what, we have to just kind of do a release. Like, let's just start this and, and we can kind of go from there. But instead of kind of like, okay, we can analyze it all we want and try to find the perfect solution. And usually the perfect solution isn't there. So being adaptable and being kind of able to continue to think on your feet and, and make something happen still, um, that, that's just one instance that yeah. comes to mind. Like it, I, I think I can guarantee you, you, you will use that a lot in your career yeah, as it comes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. When you think of a person being successful, mm -hmm. who's the person that pops into your mind? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I uh, kind of think of my um, graduate advisor, Erwin mm. Goldman. So he, yeah. um, and, and the reason why is that um, I'm, interested in staying in the academic space um, possibly and uh, and he is able to continue to maintain his excitement for his job and I think that that being able to do that and continually sort of getting excited about new directions in your career um, really uh, is a powerful thing to be able to do and and sort of kind of have that um, enthusiasm for learning enthusiasm for um, for yeah exploring new ideas and new things and also being able to balance 
um, that with other hobbies and passions nice. and all of that. Yeah, I, I think that that's easy to do when you have a two at the beginning of your age. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes even reasonably easy with a three at the beginning of the age, but it gets harder as yeah, it goes, doesn't it? Right, that, that's right. what he brings. Yeah, just, and that's one of the things I've noticed working with him over the yeah over the past few years. Perfect, perfect. How and when did you first become interested in plant breeding? Yeah, so um, I was introduced to plant breeding at a very young age. My, okay. my dad is a plant breeder at the University of Minnesota. Um, maybe some of the audience knows him. Um, and uh, <laughs> he's here at this meeting. Um, and uh, so I would go out to the blueberry plots and get to sample all the different kinds of blueberry breeding projects and strawberries and apples and, and sort of was exposed to it at a young age. I don't think I was ever sort of forced into it, right. um, but knew what it was. And um, actually at some point was like, I'm never going to be like in horticulture <laughs> plant breeding. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go do like international politics nice. or something. Um, but then uh, kind of just kept coming back to agriculture as this um, connection of humans and, and the environment nice. and um, wanting to work at that intersection of both um, human health, environmental health, kind of continuing to come back to that and, and was trying to figure out like how do I want to approach this and um, and started looking at some plant breeding programs awesome. and thinking about how that might be an avenue to, to work at, at that intersection. So, awesome. Yeah. That, that makes you very exclusive in the group because most people came to plant breeding fairly late in their academic yeah. career. Yeah, so good for you. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Um, Everybody's got a role model. Yeah. What? Who, who do you think of with a, as your role model? And then, what are the characteristics that made them your role model? Yeah. So there's um, there's a couple of of people that come to mind. I think if we're talking about sort of career wise, mm -hmm. um, so obviously uh, having well, my dad is a plant breeder. My mom is also in, in horticulture, um, and uh -huh. so the uh, sort of um, Watching them navigate their careers in both in, in academia um, has been influential on me, um, and for different reasons, you know, thinking about how do you figure out how to solve a creative plant breeding problem, or how do you communicate um, the work that you're doing to a public audience, um, right. uh, those types of things. I've also um, in the more sort of uh, organic seed and plant breeding realm um, had some role models there as well. So um, one of the people that definitely jumps to mind is Tom Stearns, who is the president of High Mowing Organic right. Seeds. And I was introduced to him early on in my graduate career. And um, I would say he uh, definitely had an influence on the way I ended up going with um, working with him and a couple of other grad students, Alex Lyon, and Adrian Shelton, um, and then our our graduate advisors um, to develop the Student Organic Seed Symposium. And so um, he just brings an enthusiasm about everything seed <laughs> related to, I think, everyone he talks to. And so that was kind of infectious and I think um, definitely played a role as well. Awesome. We can never have too much of that in our lives, can we? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> what two pieces of advice would you give to students that are starting down the path that you're already down? Yeah. Um, I guess I would say um, have fun with it and enjoy the time you're in grad school because it's really a unique opportunity, I think, to get to um, kind of follow whatever, you know, what you're there because you're interested in something and you're doing a specific project, but you also have all these opportunities to use, um, you know, the connections at the uh, university that you're at and also in, in the field um, and to really have an an opportunity to explore all of those different realms and sort of so so being able to I guess like obviously work hard and, and get your project done but not lose context of like the system in which that you know specific project is taking place because I think it's really important to remember um, that even if you're studying some very specific compound in a very specific plant that you know that is important for some reason and so why why is the work that you're doing important um, keeping kind of that in mind right. yes awesome well said so you're just the beginning of your career but my question is and this is going to take you force you to step back and look at the whole process here what would you like to accomplish as it relates to the profession helping people to um i guess in a bigger sense um connecting plant breeding with uh 
sort of the food system mm -hmm. and, and ha helping um, people outside of this world understand what it is that we're doing and how it is impacting them on a daily basis, like from everything from the, the food we eat to the clothes we wear, um, even to fuel um, and how plant breeding plays a role in that. And then um, how we can um, think about that role uh, in, um, you know, making, maybe helping to address climate change issues or addressing some of these bigger systemic things. Right. And obviously this is like a huge <laughs> goal, but right. um, kind of, good. yeah, but yeah, I, I think um, having that, keeping that in mind and, and working to really um, come up with like applied uh, solutions. I really like applying the sort of research that we're doing or the, the more academic thinking that we're doing to affect real world change. And so that's important to me and I'd like to make sure that that stays a part of my career. Awesome, well said. Thanks very much for the Of course, I thank it. you. <laughs>